roll. I'll, I'll just give everybody a quick update just to check everybody can see everything. Hear me. Okay, if there's any problems, just uh, pop up and let me know. Yeah. Um. So um, for the states, it's um still pretty um <laughs> much the same thing as before, but um, it's always the narrative of um they're just going to keep um increasing rates even um you know if it's the economy, there's a kind of consensus that um probably later this year there might be a not so bad recession. But um, for the banking crisis, turns out it hasn't been any so far, hasn't been that bad. And then um, some of the earnings reports from like very big banks like JPM, City, have been indicating that it's not too bad um, so far. So I don't think we should be too worried about uh the states yet. Um, for China, um, it's been interesting to kind of see uh China's progress as after its first quarter of reopening yeah um it's set uh wait, yeah um the government uh, it, it's uh, scheduled to re uh, release data on the first quarter um pretty soon in a, two, in, in a few days um but i think uh looking at overall data and what the market feels in general is that um china is still kind of struggling with the problem of having people save too much <laughs> Yeah, but um, so far based on, so we covered this last month as well. Um, uh, I think moving forward, we can sort of just keep looking at um, what exactly the government is putting to um, you know, applying, you know, what what policies they're doing and how that sort of um unfolds in the markets. But um, basically right now, I think that you know, pretty, it's pretty clear cut on what they're going to do following. I think maybe from now to the end of the year. Yeah, um, okay, it's not much different, so I don't think there has been anything that we really need to um, be alarmed about, uh, as usual. Yeah, just a reminder to, I, I think I sort of asked everybody um, for a gauge on where you guys are at with your memos, but um, yeah, basically, we're in the middle of April. Um, hopefully, everyone is sort of um, somewhere along that yeah, was and if you need any help just um let us know and then uh we can kind of give you a second opinion or uh you know at least share share some resources with you guys but yeah don't uh hesitate to reach out to me yeah uh yeah um i think for uh, i'll just jump to marito really quickly let me see if raj or fear is here okay <laughs> um but it's okay. Uh, for the benefit of the other members from Marito, um, I think you guys know as well. Um, basically, we're just going to have a fifth in the PM appointment because um, Ofer is uh quite busy with his business. So um, I'm I'm probably going to check in with Raj sometime uh this this coming week, and then um, but like uh, if you guys have any like um suggestions or. Anything that you want Raj to know, you can also uh kind of uh just speak to him or uh, you can also speak to me and then we can sort of have a group discussion for me too as well. Yeah. But um other than that, um uh, I think now we can sort of just move on to spring first. I know that uh there'll be a quick domino sharing and then maybe I can hear some updates on uh BYD maybe or any other things that you have for us. Oh uh, hi. Yeah, so I think uh, either Yu Sing or Sing Hui will share on Domino's. So okay. I think they've okay. wrapped up their yeah, they've wrapped up their research already. I think we are gonna move on from that. They decided not to invest in that uh for reasons they'll explain later. Um okay. yeah, yeah, we can go with the sharing first. Okay, yeah. So we wanted to um look into Domino's, then we did like further um research, but in the end we decided not to. So we had like um antithesis at the bottom. So I'll just give a brief summary. Like it's uh, Domino's has segments in US and international and then it's predominantly in US. And then it's um international franchises pretty much a lot uh, quite a lot of coverage on um the different types of countries. Yeah it's quite scattered and it's supply chain business. And then um we looked at some of the pieces first. So we felt that um its economic mode would be a strong brand equity as um, it has quite dominant um, 
share power in in the selected states. And then um, it has also a very strong supply chain management in terms of like the equipment they use. And then um, uh, for example, like trucks to uh to transport uh their their finished products um to customers. And then um, but we felt that ultimately we didn't want to invest in it because of like these three entities. It's like even though it's kind of undervalued uh, in average performance, right? It, we felt that it's underperforming based on its past uh, historical performance. So I think um, I have some, okay, for example, this one, right, right? Looking at the multiples of Domino's Pizza, you can see it's kind of like a steady uh, decline for its um, most of its performance multiples, which is quite concerning. Uh, yeah, then secondly, uh, it has quite high debt. And we felt that even though its free cash flow is positive, right? It, it's only likely, likely enough to cover its interest obligations. So there's not really a lot of room for growth. And um, its nature of the business, since it's like largely operating on franchise, we felt that there's also very limited uh, growth potential um, internationally. So um, the above two points on strong brand equity and um, its supply chain management felt that it's not enough to like substantiate an investment in um, Domino's because uh, it's like long-term balance sheet um, issues. Yeah, so we decided not to invest in Domino's after the day. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm just curious. Yeah, thanks for um sharing your findings, even though um you know it doesn't always have to be something that we have to act on. It's also interesting to kind of see um you know we go through the process and it's very real to kind of have uh a business that you know slowly we kind of uncover the reasons why uh, you know it might have a decline in price. But yeah, I'm just curious, like what kind of made you guys want to look into dominoes? Was it just the valuation? Sorry, what kind of so, so what kind of reason? So like how, how did Domino's pop up on your radar? Oh, because um I think previously we wanted to look at um like a business that's uh like simple to understand. And then because our sector is also on consumers, then we felt that um Domino's is uh has relatively few segments that we can deep dive into to um like look at each of the segments to mm -hmm. see what the drivers are. And also we felt that uh, at a point of time, Domino's was um performing quite well and like right. a well known brand. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just curious. So like, um, did you guys manage to look into sort of the pre? I mean, I guess for the states, it hasn't been uh, it's been post COVID for a long time, but um, sort of how the F and B industry, especially like casual restaurants, fast food restaurants, has there been any interesting like trend? Or mm -hmm. in terms think, of like consumer sentiment, especially with inflation and stuff. I think for uh in Domino's case, right, it's kind of in a take out. It it's like um conveniently in like this, like um riding on the strong take out take out culture mm -hmm. of of US. So um especially also like pre pre and post COVID, it might have also spread like because of the um like um lockdown which mm -hmm. might also have like um increased their revenues uh and i think that performance probably wouldn't fluctuate that much because uh i feel that this is quite defensive as a sector like um mm -hmm. yeah so i felt i feel that like it's not really um very affected so much by inflation right. yeah so it hasn't been that well i understand yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So I I think you just want to get a gauge of what you guys are looking at um in the future. So um are you guys still more interested in like uh consumer internet like like that kind of like online e commerce and or maybe like just um digitalization of like traditional way consumer businesses or um it has been more like sporadic like or more random. Mm -hmm. I think maybe more random. We might explore past uh maybe maybe more of like the digital segment. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Wait, okay, sorry, can I ask questions? questions about Domino's? Like for my own <laughs> learning, I'm curious. Yes, um, go ahead. Yeah, like, so Domino's runs on like a franchise business model, right? Mm -hmm. So like compared to uh, like chains where they own the restaurants, like every, every restaurant is operated by them. Like <clears throat> what are the difference in like the financial profile, like the margins? Between their between their um franchise versus things that they run in. I mean versus the stores that they run at. Basically, is it like more lucrative to open franchises or run your own stores? Um, I mean from what I see from Domino's, like they collect royalty, uh like a percentage royalty from the franchise. Stores, but I haven't really looked into like whether it's more lucrative to franchise out or like um mm. or own your own. So store. All their all their stores are franchises, is it? Yeah, it's the prime, yeah, 98 percent franchise. Oh, so I think it yeah. wouldn't be like a fair comparison. Yeah. Then who are their other competitors? Are there like um are there competitors that own the stores and don't franchise? Mm, so for competitors like um we identified a few uh, like Pizza Hut um Papa John's Little Caesars, uh, I think they franchise out, but um we also didn't like look into it, um whether whether the comparison between franchise um, franchising or and owning their own store. But primarily all of them mm. like kind of uh, have some sort of segments where they franchise out. Mm. Okay. Then do you know why like the multiples have came down so much? Uh from like let's say the average or something. Mm. Or, like, actually, like since January 2022, like it went from 38 to 25 uh, for PE. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we're also like wondering. Um I think I think um it's kind of like um competition with its other larger um players in the market. And probably like um yeah, I think it's like the competition with its other players as what we read like, like Pizza Hut, uh with the scissors. So yeah. in like the past month, mm -hmm. the competitors have like scaled up a lot or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So like, um, is pizza as food like more consumer staple or discretionary, would you say? I think that it's like um, consumer staple in US because uh, yeah, I think in, in US okay. specifically, it's a consumer staple. Okay. Mm. I mean, I've, yeah. I've been looking at like the past few quarters, right? And like, it looks pretty good uh, in terms of the margin and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like, I would, I would have thought that now that, you know, the sentiment is weak, it would have been like a better time to go in rather than like avoid it now. Especially mm. like since we seem to be coming towards the end of the rate hike cycle. So like, I don't know, the economy rebound. I mean, yeah, sure, they are good. They say that there's going to be a recession of year, but like after that, there'll be the rebound. And anyway, this is like considered stable. So it would have been like more defensive. Yeah, so yeah. I thought, no, we would have went into this. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not too sure. Yeah, we, were look we, think we were thinking that too, but then we felt that its balance sheet has like more problems that has already been there since quite a long time ago and there's not much improvement. So I feel like it would be quite risky to go into that mm. um based on like um like its revenue potentials. And we also didn't really see a lot of potential um in terms of its franchising outside of US since US is already quite established. Yeah. So like based on the lack of growth uh that the lack of the growth that we think that will happen in the future versus, and also like it's deeper problems in its debt. Like we felt that like maybe better not invest. Yeah. But do you think that it's uh 
maybe wise to look at it in another point of your or like maybe something that they can mm. combat. I mean, yeah, the debt has been very high. Uh, but I mean, for so many years, they've been going pretty smoothly. And I think their liquidity is like still okay. Uh, like you said, their, what, their operating cash flow cannot pay down their interest expense or something, or like barely enough. Mm. Mm. I don't know, might need to dig deeper, but I thought on the surface it still looked fine. Mm. Yeah. Right, okay. But yeah, yeah we'll probably need to figure out like what's the drivers for revenue growth moving forward also. Seems to be a bit slowing also. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Can I oh, ask you? Yeah. I mean, just now um you mentioned about um unable to expand internationally uh because of franchise. I was just wondering like why that's the case. Sorry, I'm not too sure about how this works. Oh, like so currently I think um there are segments uh so like for example thirty four percent is in the US and then uh internationally it's of uh um it already has um franchises over uh the US. I mean oh, sorry outside of US but that also contributes to seven percent like which is quite minor mine like quite small in terms of the share. So we felt that um, since it already has a strong base in US, like maybe the growth trajectory might not be um might not be look promising since like it's already there, like it's already established. So the growth um in expanding might not be very like um might not look might might not be uh like what we want in the future. Okay, so like the outside of US, basically the base isn't there, lah. That's what you're saying. Like the presence is not very strong, but would that pose like an, as an opportunity rather? Mm, they have presence there, and then it's quite scattered over, uh, the can like over the other. Yeah, but I guess when we're looking at it, we're looking more of like the U US side. Yeah, but I understand where you're coming from. Like, uh, yeah. Okay, I just, yeah, can understand. I was just curious why um, international expansion wouldn't be possible. I thought it was like some sort of like a, a way they did things that, yeah, I mean, like international franchise cannot, but okay, I, I get what you mean. Oh, sorry, on Cap IQ, there are revenue segments, sorry. There's one line called supply chain. What is there? Mm -hmm. Oh, so um, it's, I think it's, oh, there are manufacturing and supply chain centers. So like, I think there's stuff like, Plus manufacturing, uh, vegetable processing. Then, then after after they make all these um, uh, inputs, right? Then they will um ship it around, uh, to their stores. So I think it's their in-house uh, in-house in ingredient uh and manufacturing segment. Are they recorded as revenue? Like yeah, like they're selling to themselves. They are selling to U.S. Canada. International store, yeah. Oh, is that is that how it works? Oh, okay. But this like this supply chain line is larger than the US stores line. Mm -hmm. So they make more money by like selling their vegetables and stuff than selling pizza. Uh, like that's like the ingredients of their of the pizzas. Like so, dough mm. manufacturing supply chain centers. Oh. Mm. Cross oh, manufacturing like facilities like basically. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I'm just gonna chime in here with some thoughts. Um, I think interesting. I think the FME industry is quite interesting. Um, if we're talking about growth, right? So, I think your team. I mean, you guys have a preference, but on um, the team or the club in general. Like we can look at stuff that goes on discount and we try to figure out why it goes on discount and then we see if it, there's like enough merit in it to buy. Or we can look at like very like long shots, like not really long shot, like slightly 
took a leap of faith. And then we can sort of like go for like maybe more daring like thesis. But I think you can balance both and then you can sort of decide what kind of names that you want to introduce. I think in this case, um, it could be something that um, it doesn't do like a revolutionary kind of like, it doesn't introduce anything revolutionary, doesn't uh, expand like internationally a lot. But um, like, I think it's quite interesting as well. Like if you guys really in are really interested in like, um, maybe just looking at um, digitalization. So um, maybe, <laughs> I don't know how, how, what's going on exactly in the supply chain part, but um, at, like restaurants can actually, um, set up really good like logistic systems or they can actually um invest a lot in like um how they manage um you know like bring down costs how do they sort of increase their efficiency like, reduce wastage um there's a few lot of tech here and i guess this is the slightly more like juicy more exciting part um or it can be on like the customer facing and you know how they sort of like um decide where to open branches where like how do they um, get feedback from customers like I think here because there's such fierce competition in this space um, we could honestly look at companies that maybe we can't really buy because it's out of our price range or we don't think that um, it's going to be something that we can earn a lot on but like um, if we look at like stores I guess that are maybe more forward facing or they've expanded internationally more successfully um, it's it can be interesting at least it can be an interesting case study to kind of look at what exactly they do to drive that growth, um, like how they sort of um approach their um like internet internal internationalization strategy. Um, I know for like Shake Shack, um, I think all of you should know they love doing like a localization thing. They love like introducing like different menus at different places. Um, I know for pizza, it's a little bit more like standard, but um. Actually, if you think about it, every chain sort of does this a little bit, right? With like um like limited edition stuff. But like, um, I think it'd be it can be interesting overall to see if um there are certain qualities to some like uh more successful cases where they were able to do internationalization better. Yeah, but um at the end of the day, even though I say all this, um, it really depends on what you're interested in. So if you think that Domino's is worth another look at, um you can like uh, I mean the financials are there um it's really trying to see if not that we're trying to prove like oh we can like ignore the financials and we just drum up some like growth um maybe okay we know the financials are there um but is there anything that they're working on or if there's not anything too apparent then um if you're interested you can do some case studies you can look at the industry and then maybe see if anything interesting in this space pops up um, if not, I think um, back to what I said before, it's kind of like the opportunity cost of your time. So um, whether you guys want to keep looking um, into maybe more exciting trends or um, something that might have a bigger uh, return to you guys or something that just um, maybe sparks your interest a bit more. Because at the end of the day, it's really just what kind of um, company, what kind of idea that you want to spend time on and how much um, you learn during that process. But yeah, these are just my two cents. Um, I mean, great work. I, it's, it's always really nice. I do send the memo to the group chat afterwards so that we can take a look. And then uh, maybe one day, um, if you know the financial position improves a little bit, then you can look back on it. But yeah, thank you, uh, Spring. Is there anything else you have for everybody? Here? Um, I mean, okay, like updating on what the other two of us are doing. I think like okay. Eugene said, he'll look into Costco. Uh, I presume okay. it's like a defensive way. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe he can elaborate on it if he wants. But uh, for me, like on my side, I was personally like kind of waiting out to to like monitor the macro news first, like what the Fed was gonna do, and like mm -hmm. some of the tech earnings were coming out, and they just came out last week. And like, um, if you see companies like there's a lot of tech like consulting companies, advertising companies. Uh, for example, like Infosys, all this, uh, they are missing their earnings, which I kind of expected because like, I think the market didn't know how to kind of price in the rate hikes. So basically, like, what happens during rate hikes is that all these like B2B tech companies, right, those that mm -hmm. use their services, they'll start to cut their expenses because it's like the easiest to cut, like consulting expenses, just cut, uh, yeah. advertising, just Revised, cut. Right. So all these... Yeah, all these will suffer the most, but I think the market didn't price it in properly. 
So like Infosys the other day missed their earnings okay. by ten percent, which is quite uh bad. Yeah, but then mm-hmm. I think again this could be opportunity also. Like I foresee that uh all these car tech companies will start correcting by like ten to fifteen percent uh throughout the rest of the year. So perhaps we could look at picking up some of these uh in H two. Yeah, but uh I think still need to think of what specific names to look at. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. This sounds like a really interesting idea. Um. Okay. But word of caution. Um. Our overall <laughs> attitude is that uh we try to think about the very long term, like maybe five years. So mm-hmm. I mean, nobody can forecast the fire, but like um, this does sound like for now. Um. So like, what's getting you interested is um sort of maybe this uh, mispricing and a correction coming up. Um. But yeah, a lot I think of these there is something to uncover. Like, yeah. A lot of these companies are fundamentally pretty good businesses. It's just that with uh-huh. the macro, there's like a little bit of right. price dislocation there. So like, okay, yeah, it's okay. just a better time to pick it up compared to like now or two months ago. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, but um, it would be interesting to also kind of see, yeah, like as you're writing about um, describing the fundamentals and um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see like what exactly you have in store for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Okay, is that all? Uh, yeah, that's all from us. Okay. Thank you, Spring. Yeah, we we'll just jump back and talk about. Okay. Um. The last kind of the last thing on the agenda is just. Um. Blah blah. Which um, I think uh. Yeah, it was. I think a week ago, two weeks ago, or a few weeks ago by now, I think. Yeah. Um. They announced that they're actually uh going to go through this huge um structural change. I'm sure many of you um came across the news. So basically, they're um going to kind of finally step up, step away from their like conglomerate kind of status, and then move into the you know kind of they pick the six um like biggest uh sort of segments to um try and develop in a very interesting way so um they're sort of like throwing them out (laughs) of the nest like um a lot of the financing a lot of the decision making is being completely restructured is completely being um let down i think um the shift will be that um the like the main company will play more of uh like a coordinating a lot more on um allocation of resources but um, they've appointed a lot of um, executives to become CEOs of um, these six groups. Yeah, um, I think this is really interesting. Um, I think most uh, immediately, it'll probably be the concurrent discount. So that's probably um, been a big reason why the stock went up. But um, this also has a lot of implications. Uh, it just sounds very negative. Um, so a lot of... Um, changes to its um future like you know its thesis or it, its fundamentals in general so uh, i think for the baba team which is uh Xin Xiang and olivia yeah i think it'll be interesting for you guys to take a look into uh also just like look at like who is taking what and then uh what um sort of revisions have they made exactly and then uh you know how that is going to change um Kind of how Alibaba uh, operates in the future. I mean, I think the general sentiment from a regulatory perspective is that um China is warming up. You know, <laughs> Jack Ma is back. Um, he's not like running away anymore, which is um so far so good. Um, but it a lot of people and I personally also agree that it it probably means that um China is kind of like worried about its economy and kind of wants to um totally warm up to China Tech again. Yeah, and then um, you guys probably also saw that um, the China Tech team from the broader club has also bought into some uh, Chinese tech stocks. But yeah, I think um, this is quite a big piece of news. Um, I think it has quite a lot of um, things for us to unpack. Um, I think, um, do you guys have any opinions, especially the Baba team? If not, maybe Ting Xiang Olivia. You guys thought of anything that all um, you guys wanted to look into? Uh, 
Sorry, I didn't mm -hmm. hear clearly. If you want to repeat a oh, little no, no, bit. No, I, was just, I was just curious about because I was just giving my very oh, um, yeah, yeah. simple kind of <laughs> summary, more of a summary for people who I guess didn't really um, look into it too much. But it's also a very brief summary. Um, just wanted to know, like, as, as you guys um, covered the stock, obviously, and then you guys um, came up with the initiation. Um, just looking forward, like, is there any sector that you're more interested? I mean, obviously cloud, but um, I think overall, I think it'd be interesting. It's interesting how Daniel is taking uh, cloud. I mean, not surprising, but um, <laughs> it's it's quite um, it's it's quite um, at least it's it's quite a good piece of news, I guess. Um, is there anything that um you're particularly interested in, or the specific direction that you want to take with this? Me? The girl, I think it's young. Yeah. We're just really sure. Uh, like, uh, like we, we have a, a kind of a, a potential thinking on the Alice Clouds part. And we, uh, like you said, the China, China's market is uh, warming up. So we hope also e commerce will. That's a, a kind of increase right. in this year's or next year's. They will have a kind of recover uh, increase on the selling. Like we, there's no any uh, very strict restriction on the logistics service or other things. So people can buy online more frequently mm -hmm. than the last year's because last year's had the very uh, strict uh, lockdown so people reduced their right. uh buying online times yeah so this is uh my thinking i think it will be a good trend on the price of the alice stock especially after their decision on split uh, like separate their different segments into different group yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah, no, I think you brought up an interesting point. Um, so I guess um, the point of letting down like the authority and the decision making, and also like kind of altering the incentive system, kind of giving them more risk to take on individually. Um, it is going to the logic is that they're gonna let the market test whether it's ready for an IPO, and then um, they're probably just gonna remove like uh, a lot of the support. So. I'm more interested in like uh kind of the very famously like um loss making like segments like uh like Homa, like some of the um like consumer facing like um the offline retail stuff like that. Um it'd be interesting to see. Um doesn't mean that they split up everybody's gonna do well, right? Because yeah. Um also doesn't mean that the splitting up is definitely going to be, you know, immediately positive and it's going to be like forever and just everybody gets better it'd be interesting to kind of see um what each company does now um but like i said um you guys are probably more interested in cloud anyways um it'd be interesting to kind of just uh focus more of attention on cloud as well i think for the other groups it'll be more of um kind of seeing how um the you know i guess the hq in the sense um sort of allocates and how they view the other segments and then how much um time and resources they want to uh, you know what they envision is the future of Alibaba as these um on the like new generation <laughs> companies, smaller companies, sort of um kind of test themselves and kind of grow. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. Um. It. I think this would be a good point in time to start working on maybe a revision or an update. Yeah. Nothing too like. I think that for the initial meme initiation memo we're a little bit more like okay let's try to cover everything so that everybody who reads the memo has a good idea of what the business is you know why it's priced here why we think it should be priced higher stuff like that but um for updates it's really just trying to always test everything that we assumed before doesn't mean that um what was true you know a few months ago is still true now or um, it's always interesting to kind of see how businesses react and how um, market conditions change, how, you know, they come and, like, 
um, you know, sort of react to different opportunities, different challenges, but it's for us to kind of always check that um, our assumptions still seem reasonable, our thesis still seems somewhat intact. And then maybe we could even have a revision in our target price. But yeah, um, that's just the purpose of doing it. But um, I think you guys should be quite excited as well. This is quite exciting. Because we don't know what's going to happen exactly. But um, yeah, at least we have some um, something to work with. Yeah. OK. Um, OK, if there's nothing more from the Baba side, actually, we are done for today. Yeah, so um, I think moving ahead, uh, so for Marito, um, it will be really uh important for you guys to um meet up and then um to sort of see uh with Raj as the new uh PM, what um direction you guys kind of want to take, because um I think it, it can be interesting. I mean, there's no limit on what company comes to mind or what company like pops up and then you want to look at it, but it's also nice to sort of um kind of train our like longer term thinking. If you if you have something that um is like a longer term trend or you think that there's something, you know, there's a more powerful like longer term force shaping something, then you could sort of like test your thesis on that. And then you can sort of look for companies that sort of um kind of align with that or fall into that category. And then you can see, you know, you have at least a, a strategy that you're going out and testing. Yeah. But um if not, it's fine as well. I think as long as you guys figure out there's like a certain industry or there's a certain type of strategy you guys want to try, then um at least lock that in first. And then um so like within the team, if you guys want to work in solo or you, know, you want to work in pairs, or you know how how to allocate uh, work and how to kind of um make sure everybody uh volunteer or something. Um that's really up to you guys, but um it is quite important that you guys do it. Yeah, um for spring, yeah, um basically on the update, everything sounds good. Um yeah, just um have fun and um do meet up more often, I guess. Um, because uh you know, within even within the same team, I think um before you come to us, you can also um kind of let each other know and proofread for each other because you guys are like the smaller circle. Yeah. Um yeah, and then uh for everybody else, like individually, uh yeah, do work on your memos of don't um I feel afraid. I think a little bit every day. And then if you want to do anything that you can't really find online or you really want like an expert opinion, it's very, very likely that Shinya knows somebody who is like a, like a, like a, don't know, like five, 10 year expert has been investing in this field forever. And then they can just like link you up or, or something like that. So um, if you really do find yourself like wanting to add something like that, you can also just let me let Shinya know. Yeah, and then um, once you're ready, you can also just let me know and then we can get you published so that more people can read your work. Okay. okay does anybody have any questions? Very urgent requests? Uh, yeah, I just have a question as well. Because, okay. you know, yeah, IT had the reduction in capital, right, of the 20K. Uh -huh. So just wanted to check whether you guys have any thought on, you know, how to whether you want to get it back up or, you know, can deploy the rest of the capital or what are the plans? Uh, I think it makes sense because we weren't really using it before. Um, I think if it optimizes the, you know, kind of efficiency of how it's used in the club, then it's okay. Because I think uh, once we're ready with the memo, it's essentially the same thing. Uh, we'll just bring it up to you. I guess there's like more hurdles to jump, um, but uh, we're supposed to put a lot of work into the memo anyway. So if we bring it to you guys, it's something that we've checked and we've discussed as a group anyway. So um, I guess it's just one more like huddle. But it does make sense that um, we don't have to hold so much if we're not using all of it. Okay. Uh, okay does anybody good. else have like concerns about this or? So with the capital reduction, what is our current rate uh, weightage in BABA and BYD? Oh, it's come up by a lot. So it's 30k and 10k. So it's about 33% and used to be 12k. Now it's something bad. It's so bad. Um should be around 20-ish and 30-ish. Yeah. For Baba and okay. BYD. Yeah. Then for the Baba, like just curious, are y'all planning to continue holding on to all six units after they spin off? 
or like they all think we, there are certain distances that are better. We think it might take some time for them to IPO, honestly. <laughs> right. Like, not sure oh. how long exactly. You know, we'll have to look into it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if the Baba team has already, like, already has any sort of prediction. They confirmed that. the logistics one already, right? Oh, is it? I think okay. so. I'm not. I'm not, not, not sure if I read correctly. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm, think... I'm also not very like experienced in like what happens to the original company if the subsidiary basically IPO. what happens after a spin off is like the spin off co will experience uh-huh. like a kind of significant sell off. Reason being like some people don't want this exposure in their portfolio anymore, or something like that. Like I assume most people buy Baba for like their e commerce business, not so much like the logistics or whatever maybe oh, yeah. exposure to cloud i don't know but their cloud business is still like super small so maybe not also but like mm-hmm. yeah once they spin off i think like all those that are not their main businesses will kind of dip a bit so like just wondering if y'all will sell those off also or like your thing is a chance to accumulate yeah but okay if it's too early then yeah, yeah we can look at it next time i mean maybe i, I, th- I think uh, we didn't start out being super interested in the smaller businesses as well. So yeah. I don't think we're like super, yeah. It's at the price but y'all did the valuation, do y'all do like some of the parts or is it just this year? Uh, I think they did something like some of, I can't remember, but my team. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Just curious. <laughs> yeah, that, that is an interesting point because I almost forgot to ask. Because I don't really know what happens usually. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Then we'll, we'll leave it to the Baba team. Like, we can talk about what exactly we want to do. Sorry. Oh, oh yes, Ophir. Sorry, I just checked the chat box in case somebody shot me a question. Yes, please go ahead. Right. Um. So, I think everybody is already updated. Well, he's been the team, right? Because I joined late. Oh, yeah. We, we updated everybody. Okay, so first, sorry for joining at 8.30. Um, I just want to say good luck for everybody, to everybody, and thank you for being part of the club. I hope Muli will be... I think Muli will be a great PM, and I think uh, the Merito team consists of great people. So I wish all of you good luck. And as you may know, I I leave the club to focus on my business. That's pretty much it, and I hope to see everybody in real life. If if, if I haven't already saw you. All right. Thanks, Sophia. Yeah, we'll see you around. I mean, doesn't mean that uh, we won't, you know, still be, uh, you know, if you come to our city. I'm still waiting for you to come to Singapore again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. And, and to China as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all the best with your business as well. And I'm sure Marido members are very excited. Okay. All the best, Rafael. Thank you. All right. Okay. Is there anybody else who has questions, requests? Okay. If not, then that's all for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And then hope you guys have a really good week ahead. Um, I'm assuming that a lot of the Singaporean kids are either almost done with or like free from exams. So hopefully that gives you all more time to meet up and to look into more companies, more industries. Yeah. But um, for those who are still having exams, all the best to you as well. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.